Well, I was playing cricket on the farm with my cousins. Uh, my first cricket ball was a rock with a rag tied around it, which my mother had sewn together. Uh, my first football was the bladder of a sheep or a pig or something or other. And uh, I would play with my cousins. Uh, I didn't know what I was doing. I was just running around like any young bloke. But uh, really, uh, I, I got more into cricket uh, when we come across the Malibu Point, uh, Port Kembla and Auburn. When I was at Petersham, I, would, I, I just had this yearning to be around trees and, and grass and uh, just climbing trees and, and just running around. And there at Petersham Oval, I would watch the cricketers in their whites come running to the fence. And the no, vision. But also in that era. Tell me about that. He's obviously a great mate of yours. Oh yeah, Tom has a great mate, and uh, <laughs> oh, I, some things I can tell on camera and some things I can't. <laughs> but uh, Tomo, first time I came across him, I was playing for North Bankstown Public School, and he was playing for Coral Park Public School. So we would have been probably about nine or 10 years of age. And uh, there we were up at uh, Graff Park, and uh, uh, I took five wickets that day, and he took six wickets that day. And uh, we did, you know, it didn't come across our part, we didn't come across each other again until uh, we went to Punchbowl Boys High School. And it was there uh, in, the f in sixth form, which was the first year of high school. I got graded in the, first, in, the, in the team, but Jeff was graded in the house cricket because they thought he had a funny action. And he uh, was breaking bones and uh, all sorts of things. Coach as well. And uh, I bowled one uh, and it was pretty good. And, I said, how'd you like that one, fans? And Mr. Clark, his name was big, uh, a Maori Islander. He's called me over and he's gone, we are not your fans and never will be. <laughs> and uh, with that, uh, uh, he sort of brought me down to ground level. I'm in his music class and I couldn't tell the difference between crotchets and waivers. And uh, he just signaled me out and hit me over the back of the knuckles with a ruler. And uh, that was the end of my uh, musical career until many, many years later when I started MDing and Johnny Cash shows and Elvis shows. So I've got my own back on Mr. Clark later on, but we'll talk about that later. Well, we certainly will, and about your daughter as well, which is a very important part of the show, the, the beauty of her voice. Uh, the, actually, uh, that's Charlotte. Uh, I treat her as my daughter. Uh, uh, my daughter, uh, she's an artist and she's a conveyancer and, uh, we're kind of like oil and water. Uh, we're alike in many ways and we're always at each other's. And I see a mirror image of myself, you know, but uh, Charlotte, uh, she is just sensational. Um, I was doing this job for the A&P Financial Planners. Uh, it was a speaking job and uh, we had some entertainment there as well. And I'm a big fan of encouraging young people, whether it's the cricket or their sport or whatever it is, uh, dreams don't cost anything, as uh, Jimmy Cassidy said recently, the great jockey. And uh, I, unknowingly, I was doing that for these young kids. I was giving them the dreams to reach for. And, uh, and uh, this mother came up to me and she said, I have a daughter that sings. Well, I've heard this before. I've got a, I've got a cricketer who can play, who can bowl or he can bat. And uh, I said, look, send me a DVD of a singing. Well, I was just blown away at 14 years of age. She was just spectacular, Charlotte Lorimer. And uh, I said, that's it, no more talent contest. When you work for me now, you'll get paid as a full-time artist. But you're going when he turned his back, I got the impression that he, he didn't expect a lot <laughs> <laughs> or didn't want to have any conversation. So Mike Hendrick bowls the first ball. He bowls the second ball. I thought, they ain't that quick. I got this one out the ground. I got caught second slip by Ian Botham. Kerry O'Keefe was 49 not out. He didn't talk to me for four weeks. But uh, anyway, we go out to bowl. And I've taken three wickets for next to nothing. And uh, we've got him in trouble. Big time. Boycott the looking at him and pulling down all these helmets off the shelf. And there was baseball helmets and all, all sorts of helmets, mining helmets, all sorts bike riding. I looked up and I saw a horse riding helmet. I pulled it down and I put it on Ian's head. I said, "How do you? what do you think of this, Ian? And he said, I like it. He said, can we put a mask on it? 
And at, at that stage, uh, the, the gentleman said, yes, well, we can put a polycarbonate mask that a 22 bullet wouldn't go through. And uh, so he put it on, and Ian Davis was the first one to wear that helmet, a horse riding helmet with a polycarbonate mask. I was playing up in uh, uh, Gladstone against the West Indies. I went to hook a ball off uh, Colin Croft, hit the button on the horse riding helmet, and I was given out caught behind. I went back and complained to the manufacturer, so they took the button off. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, interestingly, Jeff Thompson now, he got banned in World Series. He, 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 went, he was World Series, got out of World Series, went back to World Series. Now we've amalgamated again. And we're at the Sydney Cricket Ground number two. And they wanted to do an example of this cricket helmet with this polycarbonate shield. So here they are, 22 yards. Tomo's at the long run up. And he's going to let them fly at these journos who are going to feel, see what it's like to be behind a 100 mile an hour delivery. And they had a polycarbonate shield at the front. And I said to the organisers, I said, before a reporter journo gets in there, let Tomo bowl a couple. Anyway, Tomo, in four balls, smashed it to smithereens. And that was the end of the polycarbonate shield. And they come back with the wired gauze shield. So when people say to me, what's your greatest achievement? To me, it's in the development of that helmet in conjunction with an opening bat, Ian Davis, and a fast bowler. And when I see players getting hit uh, with, you know, on the helmet, um, I wonder, do they know the history of this? You know what, Ian Davis and I never received a single cent, nor did we ask for one. And uh, I'm still very proud of it. To look at the shape of it now, it's still a horse riding helmet, but obviously they've structurally changed it. Uh, but Tony Hanson, we bought the company. He then went on, nearly went broken it a couple of times. Uh, Steve Small, who would play for New South Wales, uh, he was a rep for him for a while. And then eventually uh, the Albion Hat Company who makes the baggy greens, they took it over and marketed it and everything. And of course, it's the success it is today. What a magnificent story. We're going to break on that point through the eyes of a cricketer. I'm Len Pascoe and this is TV Akana or Yakana. I'm not sure which way to pronounce it. I'll go with Icana. So Len, we're on a TV channel here. What is it called again? Icana? Close. Icana? It's actually TV Icana. It actually means unseen, did you know? I kind of like the name Icana. Icana. You know, at first you think it's putting furniture together. But, <laughs> but no, it's not. Uh, it's, it's all about what's happening in the world today. Exactly. And I think it's fantastic. Len on TV Icana. Walls are in Greek chapels, Ian chapels. Um, what is interesting to me is your experience with the grounds as we are through the eyes of a cricketer. Tell me some of the experiences you had on some of the grounds you got to play at through your life. Let's start with that. Well, I think uh, the first time I walked onto the SCG was uh, an unbelievable feeling because I think I dreamt mm. about it, you know, as a kid. I always wanted to play cricket for Australia, funny enough, even at eight years of age. And I think deep down in your subconscious, yep. I believe I would. And to have actually got to that stage and Walked out on that ground was was eerie, you know. It was incredible, and the SCG was um, my favourite in their own time. And and I looked up to those people as well. And and to have Neil Harvey and Don Bradman and those sort of people around the dressing room was incredible. Um, Neil Harvey was very black and white. That's what I liked about him. He'd say it as it was. He wanted to pick a young player, and they they picked me. And uh, he was confident in my ability, which gave me confidence. And they portrayed that. That's what I liked about them. They were very confident about walking into the dressing room at any time and, and giving you advice and helping you. I, I remember Keith Miller sent me a lovely note um, from the bar at the SCG down to the dressing room. I was going through a little bit of a rough patch and just, you know, on a beer can canister, just said, um, Ian, you know, you've got the ability, just believe in yourself, you can do it. And I've still got it at home. Uh, how incredible was that? And through your eyes, 